TR Rehab coming back at you October 2020. Uh, today we're going to be working on um, my Infinity FX35. Uh, we're having an issue with the uh, rear trunk. It won't open. So uh, what I did was I went to eBay, found me some used uh, struts or shocks as they call them. And I'm going to show you an easy way in how to save yourself about $800 in going to the dealer. You ever go out to your trunk, hit your button, you hear the... And nothing happens? <laughs> well, it's probably because your uh, struts or your shocks in the rear lift gate are probably worn out and need to be replaced. Uh, the dealership, they were talking about $900 to replace this. I looked on eBay found a used set on there and uh, we ordered them. I think I paid $175 for the set and we're going to show you a quick way to replace these and save yourself some money. So what I'm going to have to do, I'm going to have to manually open this thing. It's going to be kind of heavy going up and then I'm going to prop my stick up on it uh, once I get it up. Once you get it up there, you're going to have to hold it and then just kind of prop a stick up under it and then you'll hold it there. So what we're going to do is, we're going to need just a little small flathead screwdriver and you'll see that there's a little small indenture right there and there's a clip and that's what holds this shock in place. Once that clip is taken out, this shock will just pop out of its um, little socket. And be careful not to puncture yourself, but just getting in there like that. It just pops out just like that. And you and there it is. That's one of them out. And then there's the same little indenture on the top. I'm gonna do the exact same thing to it. Get your screwdriver in there, pop it. It pops right out. That simple. Now there are gonna be two gaskets here, and then one you just kind of flip back, and then the other is just sitting up under there. We don't even really have to bother that for right now because once we get on the inside of it, we're gonna take the two connectors loose, and then we're just gonna pull this whole thing out. All right, here are some of the tools that we're going to be using. The flathead screwdriver, and we're going to use that to kind of pry off the uh, plastic housing there. Uh, this one we've already used to get the clips off. And this one you're going to use in order to get the connectors, the wire connectors on the inside. You're going to have to push it. And because it's such a tight fit in there, your hand won't be able to reach it. So you can use this to kind of push the clip and then yank it up. So. Uh, We'll get to that in a second. Get this out the way. And uh, first thing we're gonna have to do is the rear seat latch. I'm gonna go ahead and let that go forward. And we wanna take this off. And it's not necessary to take this whole piece out, but the reason why we wanna take this off is because it gives us a little bit of leverage to what we don't have to take all of this off because that's what we don't want to do. This is the reason why we need the uh, smaller flathead. We'll just pop it in there. Pop that, pop that out. And there's a 10 millimeter screw up in there. I'm gonna use that 10 millimeter socket and just back it out. And then once you get that out, you just kind of pull the lever, pop this forward, and then pull it to the front. And it pops off. And that's pretty much it on that. Now here's the tricky part. Uh, you just gotta be careful not to damage your pillars here. So we are gonna kind of just wedge up in here, up under the seal. 
and you'll hear it like pop. You just want to pull with your hand at the same time. It's not going to be real easy, but on the way to get it out of there. And there may be another way to do it. There's one. You see these little clips right here? That's all you're doing. You're just popping those out. Little rivet clips. Hear them popping? And um, I think that's good enough right there. We don't really need to get it all the way out because here is the one clip. That's the main clip right here. And then you have a second clip that runs back and it sits up in there. It's gonna be real tight to get your hand up in there, but that's just a little hose here. And you're gonna wedge your hand up in there into, in the center of that clip. You just kind of push up in there and pull it out. And that's how that comes out. And I'll show you uh, once I get it off the clip that I'm pushing. So that's the hardest one to get to. This one here is easier to get to, but it's actually harder to come off. But again, you just point, push it towards the center there. And this one has a little button towards the top right here you gotta mash and pull at the same time and my fingers are a little big but we got that out and again that's the clip you want to break loose right here I'm gonna push that down and if you're pulling up on it at the same time and then you could use this top one to uh, further get it out and it'll snap out but that's about as simple as it is and you got this um, gasket here to keep the water from going into your um, your inside and you just basically just just pull it and then walk the wires out that simple and everything's gonna be the same thing when we put the new one back in Okay, we're back with the uh, used part. I said new, but used. Used is just as good. So you're just gonna run the wires in there. And you're basically just doing the, the reverse of what you just did to take it out. And this is actually the easy part. Run those wires through. Pull them through. And um, we'll come back and set the seals after we um, get it all hooked up. And these are the little clips that you have on there. And they basically lock in around the um, little piece. You just kind of sit it right there on that little, the little gash right there. And it'll flip around on there. And that's simple. And if it's in the right place, it'll lock in. If it's not, then it'll pop back out. And as you can see, that's locked in. That's how simple it is. And the same thing. See how I got that propped up right there? So, go up. And my stick's probably going to fall as it did. And then you just, boom. That's locked back in. Again, this seal here. Got two, one's a seal and the other one's just a little grummet to kind of make the water run off. But if you've taken it apart, you pretty much know exactly what you're gonna do to put it back together. I just didn't see any videos on YouTube or anywhere that showed you how to uh, do this. And uh, after going up to the dealership, and them quoting me over $800 to replace these things. Uh, I thought I'd go to eBay and get me some used ones and do the job myself. And here are two wires here. Uh, you basically just take that same plug, go back, you hear it click, you know that's in there. And this one here is a little harder to get to, but not difficult. 
just kind of set it in the right position. The pieces that you're, uh, you want to just make sure that those line back up with the holes. And that's about as simple as it is to get it back together again. And you'll hear them click as you uh, put them up. You may have to force it a little bit to get it in place. pretty good and if uh, when you mash your key fob and it doesn't go down you may have to go and manually let it down with your hands so that it'll lock and reset the system and then after that you should be able to use the key fob to get everything going but um, we'll put the rest of this back together I'm gonna just try this out real quick because we know it wasn't working before and now we are working <laughs> 